Good morning, dear saints. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along today in the scriptures we will be looking at. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, the scriptures we will be examining today. Follow me along, make sure I'm telling you the truth, okay? Ye Bereans, search the scriptures daily, what are these things be so, okay? Follow me along, if there's a question about context, pause the video and search the scriptures daily, whether these things are be so, okay? And also follow me along too, because the mouth will go quicker than my brain sometimes, okay? So, check me out. You'll see the thumbnail. Judge not, lest ye be judged yourself. Judge not. Judge not. That is a reflex action for a Christian or for any lost individual. Judgment. Judge not, lest ye be judged. <laughs> Don't judge me. And see, when you hear a Christian say that, what are they saying? When someone says, in a basic sense, when someone says, don't judge me, what are they saying? Don't tell me the truth. Don't tell me what I'm doing is wrong when, when you're yourself, right? Right? When you come across Christians who say, don't judge me, or what accompanies that is, well, God knows my heart, and that's, no, that, stay away from people like that. When you hear one of these Christians, yeah, don't judge me. Look at you. Don't judge me. So, today we are going to be going into a look in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 5. We have a lot of scripture we're going to be going over today. A lot. A lot. This is not milk. This is meat. Okay? If you don't like a lot of scripture, this is not a video for you. Okay? Now that's two minutes. You there it is. Okay, we got a <laughs> we got a lot of scripture to go through today. Alright? So, with that said, let's not dilly-dally. Let's read through. Matthew 7, verses 1 on to verse 5, and then we're going to have some expository upon some expository. Okay? Because Christian will tell you, don't judge. And when the Christian says to you, don't judge, what is that? Don't make the sinner aware of their sin. You know, look, we're Christians, we're not judging you. Or, if a Christian is doing something that they know... Uh, God doesn't look favorably on, well, they do. Well, don't judge me. Uh, Christian. Christian, yeah. By the way, I am not a Christian. And if you're saved, guess what? Neither are you. You're a saint. You're a saint. And you might gasp at that, like, oh! In the description box, again, what is a saint will be there for you to go over. All right? But, let's Let's get this started, okay? Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 5. First, let's read through this. Oh, and incidentally, judge not that ye be not judged. Mr. Hetfield, Mr. Burton got it wrong, obviously. And isn't that interesting? It used to be that most people, when you would, you know, most, most people, like, can you quote a verse of scripture? Jesus wept. How about anything else? It used to be, uh, God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? <laughs> Forgive me for bradizing that a little bit. But, um... Yeah, it was usually John 3, 16. And what's interesting is, I've heard Christians actually quote it right. 
that God, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then they'll read a Bible that says uh, one and only son. They're like, huh? Uh, no, only begotten. Okay, where the Bibles will say one and only. <laughs> okay, and you read the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2, uh, sons of God, angels. Yeah, so when a Bible says one and only son, that's not true. Only begotten is true. Okay, but it used to be that John 3, 16, and of course Jesus wept, the most lost people could at least grasp or, or at least try to quote. Nowadays, with such as it is, evil is good and good is evil, and you've got those of us saints of the Church of the Living God that adhere to the Scriptures, okay, and you tell, you inform people, it's like, hey, you know, that's, that's wicked. It's like, don't judge me. The don't judge me has eclipsed all, especially amongst lost people, as the favorite thing from the Bible. And, and of course, they quote James Hetfield, judge not lest ye be judged yourself. No, judge not that ye be not judged. For, what, for with what measure, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Okay. Verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. If you have ribbon markers in your scripture, today's the day to use them. John chapter 5 verses 19 on verse 31. Then Jesus, then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Now in Scripture, you'll see this thing about our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. You'll see Son of Man, Son of God, Son of David. Okay? All right? Son of Man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Meaning exactly that. Son of God. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. Okay? All right? The only begotten. All right? Son of David. Okay? Meaning unto his kinship, his kingship as king of the Jews. King of kings, Lord of lords. Okay? All right? Jesus is the Son of Man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of God. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? All right? God, Jesus is God the Father. Son of David. King of kings. Lord of lords. Okay? That's what those three things mean. All right? So when he's like, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Because you and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is the body. This nonsensical, satanic, blasphemous dung called the Trinity, okay? It, it's, it's, a, it's a fallacy. It's a joke, okay? It comes from Satan, all right? All right? But God is one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. 
Okay. So right away in verse 19, all right, all right, we see a picture of being guided, the flesh being guided. Okay. And you also got to remember too. Also got to remember too. And um, you probably haven't even need to be alive uh, 12 years to realize that this does seem to have a mind of its own, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Okay, but let's continue. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. He will shew him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Hmm. Okay? Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, okay? God Father appeared many times in the form of a man. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. For example, Genesis chapter uh, Genesis chapter three, they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk unless there is a body? Okay. The three visitors that appeared unto Abraham. Okay. Two of them were angels. One was God the Father, a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Okay. The, the three dudes in Genesis there that appeared on to Abraham, that was not the Trinity. Okay, that's insane. No, it was not the Trinity. Okay? Also, wrestling with Jacob, the guy who appeared and wrestled with Jacob, precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? All right? Um... And Joshua, you know, the commander of the army of the Lord of hosts, okay? Melchizedek, okay? Uh, Daniel, uh, the fourth is like the Son of God, okay? Within the Old Testament, God the Father would appear in... He also appeared, how else did he appear? He appeared in the uh, bush, in the flame of fire in the bush, okay? All right? When God the Father would appear within the Old Testament, it was in the form of a man, okay? In the fire of the bush, okay? A still small voice, okay? All right? But see, when God the Father appeared in the Old Testament, generally in the form of a man, okay, where did that man come from? Just appeared out of nowhere, right? Right? Yes. Yes, okay. Exodus chapter 33, verses 17 on to verse 23. Check this out. Check this out. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. Hmm, shew me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness, all my goodness, it says, pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. Hmm. For there shall no man see me and live. Really? Really? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Okay? Abraham obviously saw the face of God the Father. Adam and Eve in the garden, they obviously saw the face of God the Father in the form of a man. They saw God descending on Mount Sinai. Okay? Jabal el Laws, the real Mount Sinai. Okay? But they saw you know, the fire and whatnot. Um, also with Elijah, 
you know, there was a mighty uh, wind and the rocks rent and an earthquake and a fire and the Lord wasn't in that. And then a still small voice. What do I stop with Okay. All right. God in the Old Testament, when he would appear, okay, he appeared as a whirlwind. Okay. He did. But he would appear as a man more often than not. Okay. All right. And that man that he would appear as in the Old Testament, all right, he could just appear and disappear. Whereas Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You see the difference there? You see the difference there? Okay. Go with me where, where we're going with this, okay? Uh, stay with me on this, all right? Verse 21, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Verse 23, And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Hmm. Hmm. You got to remember, God is a spirit. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The problem that people make is they want to say that this dirt is God. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God in flesh. Flesh is not God. Flesh is not God. Okay? You have to understand that. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We want verses 1 on to verse 7. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g, God of this world, that's Satan, okay, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. Hmm. Okay? Image of God. What does that mean? He's God the Father. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? He's the Father. Okay? He's the Father. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Okay? But we have this treasure, our Lord Jesus Christ, in earthen, excuse me, earthen vessels. Okay? That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Not of this. Okay? Alright? So, so, not of this. Remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Dear friends, dear people, this, this is not God. Flesh is not God. God was in flesh, but flesh is not God. That is a deception of Satan. Okay? All right? And see, in the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, God would appear as a man. A man that didn't have a beginning and didn't have an end. Kind of like Melchizedek. Okay? He would just appear. 
okay? Captain of the Lord of hosts. He appeared to Abraham, okay? The voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, okay? Wrestling with Jacob, okay? He would appear in the Old Testament in the form of a man. The other forms, the whirlwind and, uh, and the fire, yes. But he would appear as a man who didn't seem to have a beginning or an end. He would just appear, okay? See, this is the importance of begotten, okay? Begotten, all right? God would appear as a man in the Old Testament. But it wasn't until Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? The difference, the difference, all right? But let's continue with this. Let's continue with this. Go back to John chapter 5. Oh, wait, excuse me, one more. Excuse me, one more. One more, beg your pardon. 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, male, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And in Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, God shall provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. Okay? All right? All right, now go back to John. Go back to John chapter 5, verse 23 now. Well, let's read verse 22 again. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Okay? And God the Father is the soul, the Godhead. Okay? You cannot see the soul. You cannot see the soul. Peter Ruckman had this right. You looking at me, you're looking at the body, not me actually. So Brad, I'm looking right at you. Ruckman had this right. You are not looking at me. You are looking at my body. You are not looking at me. Okay? All right, you understand? That's how that works. All right? So, for the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, Son of God, Son of Man. Son of man, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? All right, Son of David, King of kings, Lord of lords. All right? See how that works? All right? So, and we saw that uh, no one could see his face and live. Hmm. But yet, you see the face of Jesus Christ. They saw the face of Jesus Christ who is God the Father. Okay? Very interesting. Let's continue. Now verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. Verses 10 on to 12. Psalm 2, verses 10 on to 12. Be wise now, therefore, fear the Lord. O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Hmm. Judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born. The prophecy of Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Capital W Wonderful, Capital C Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Capital F Father. Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, son David, and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hmm. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. See, when you fall for the lie of the Trinity, you have a God that isn't as powerful, I guess you will, as the Father, right? And they say, well, my Father is greater than I. Talking about the soul of the Godhead, okay? This will perish. This, you can cut it, it will bleed. This uh, sags with age. Absolutely, okay? Remember, God is not flesh. God was manifest in the flesh, dear people. And see, this is the Catholic thing. They, you know, they get the little wafer cookie, and then the Jesuit priest does the abracadabra, hocus pocus, woody, 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 and they make the little perfectly round sun-shaped cookie into the flesh of Jesus, so they say. Abracadabra, hocus pocus, transubstantiation, okay? And they say, God, uh, God Jesus is not the Father, uh, G, uh, the Son, whatever they say about the... Uh, you know, the God is the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, the Holy Ghost is not the, it's a, it's a mess. It's a mess. The Trinity is a mess. Okay? But see, when you tell these people Jesus is the Father, look at how they react. <gasps> you said that Jesus is the Father? Yes, Jesus is the Father. And they get Jesus is not the Father. <laughs> so in the Trinity they react look at how they react to that so you're putting your faith in a lesser God hey hey you Trinitarians Jesus is not you know he's he's like the father but he's not the father no Jesus is the father if your savior is not God the father are you saved John chapter 10. Let's give a little evidence of this. Verses 30 on to verse 38. I and my Father are one in essence. <laughs> I and my Father are one in spirit. I and my Father are one. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One God. Christ of spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. That's nonsense. Look at how the Jews react. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from the Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. The Hebrews generally understand that the Mashiach is going to be God the Father. Okay? The, they, they basically get that. Okay? There are some Hebrews out there who, for some non nonsensical reason, decided to, you know, believe in the satanic trinity, okay, for whatever reason, I, I, whatever. But, even they were like, wait a minute, you're calling yourself God. Uh, makest thyself gods? No, God. One God. One God. Jesus answered them. It is, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods, little g. What does that mean? In the description box, there will be a video about that, ye are gods, where we talk about that. But remember, Satan's lie unto Eve. 
ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. you got to remember in the Garden of Eden, it was all works. They saw God walking in the garden. Okay, all they had to do is like, you could do all this. The only thing you couldn't do was eat from that tree. Okay, don't eat it. He said nothing about touching it. Don't eat it. Okay, that was it. That's a work, Jack. Okay, that's a work. They didn't need faith because they could see the Lord. Satan comes along. It's like, uh, what? God said you can't do with this or that or the other thing. And, uh, you know, he said, hey, don't worry. Eat from the tree. You won't die. Because God knows that the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Being able to judge as if you are God, knowing what is truly good and what is truly evil. And today, with the whole trans woke stupidity and this uh, uh, soap opera called the presidential thing here in America, okay, uh, today good is evil and evil is good, okay? Good is evil and evil is good. That's how it is today. A uh, man in and of himself is not capable of judging righteously. Man gets righteous judgment sometimes, yes. We can make the right decisions in that respect. But ultimately, we do not know what is truly good and what is truly evil unless we're told by who? God. Okay? And that's what Satan's lie was. You can be as gods. You can judge for yourself. See? Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Because of the Garden of Eden. Okay? Because of the Garden of Eden. Alright? They disobeyed. And sin was brought in. Okay? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God, the only begotten, okay? God manifest in the flesh, okay? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do... Though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Meaning he is the Father. The Father in me. The soul. The Godhead. You and I, saints, we have the Father in us. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? You see how that works? See how that works? But see... I and my Father are one. Okay? Alright, and John chapter 14, verses 6 unto verse 11. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> verse 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shewest the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? <laughs> okay. Talking about the souls of Godhead. All right? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Meaning, it's not coming from this. Okay? Alright? But the Father that dwelleth in me. Okay? He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Okay? 
All right, and James chapter 4. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verses 11 on verse 12. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Now you got to remember this about the book of James, as with the book of Hebrews. This is specifically written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, James chapter 2 is a good example of that. Okay, it is written unto the twelve tribes scattered abroad. Okay, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be faith and works as it was under the law. Okay. All right? It's going to be faith and works during the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Eternal security will not be there, okay? Only ones that are going to be sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Jews. You have to remember that, okay? But, verse 12, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? God is our judge. God knows perfectly what is good and what is evil. Okay? Alright? So, with God, holds, stands, perfect, righteous judgment. And God has given us perfect, righteous judgment. Yes. And if you are saved, he dwells within you. Okay? Do, 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 do you kind of get where we're going with this? You kind of get? Now go back to John chapter 5. John chapter 5, picking up at verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Verse 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, he says, I am. Okay? Uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Okay, hold your place there. I've got a ribbon marker there. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Verse uh, 39 on to 41. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. Little G there, okay? I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever, okay? If I whet, W-H-E-T, as to sharpen, my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, my hand, signifying our Lord Jesus Christ, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. Okay then, right? Alright, now go back to John, chapter 5, verse 26 again. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son, to have life in himself. Okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? Verse 27. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Because he is the Son of Man. Okay? Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verses 21 on verse 26. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he's a mind reader, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. 
but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And where are we? Uh, verse 26. And immediately he rose up before them, <coughs> excuse me, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. See, the Jewish people, the Hebraic people, through Scripture, understood that the Mashiach, the Messiah, Christ, would be, number one, son of David, king of the Jews, son of God, God manifest in the flesh, son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? All right? All right. Jesus Christ does come in the flesh, meaning that God was born. Uh, we're not getting there. God was born uh, uh, in the form of man, okay, from a womb. Whereas before in the Old Testament, he would just appear, you see, okay. Um, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, I want to get to a head on that. John chapter 8, John chapter 8. Verses 12 on to verse 19. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come, or whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. But wait a minute. We've been just looking that all judgment is committed unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Wait a minute. What, what does that mean? People, God is not flesh. Okay? Okay? God is not that. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? The flesh itself is not God. Okay? It is not. All right? God within flesh. You understand? That's what he's talking about. Ye judge after the flesh. Hence, why our judgment is flawed. Okay? Why man's judgment... You and I, were dirt. Okay? We, in and of ourselves, do not... are not capable of perfect righteous judgment. God is. And He has given us the standard on which to first judge ourselves and to judge others. Verse 16, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. What, and that was, uh, oh, verse 19. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. <laughs> Come on, guys. Jesus is the father. Okay? Okay? <laughs> All right? Jesus is the father. And see, these people didn't know him and because you don't know Jesus you don't know the father because he is the father see how this works but now go to Galatians Galatians chapter 4 Galatians chapter 4 Galatians chapter 4 verses 1 on to verse 5 okay now like we had said in the beginning of this video in the Old Testament 
God would I forget I forget the the technical name of it, what they call it, but when God appeared in the form of a man, he just appeared. Okay? He could come and go. Alright? Just appear. He appeared to Jacob and wrestled with Jacob. Okay? He appeared to Abraham when he was gonna go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? He walked in the garden of Eden and Adam and Eve saw him. Okay? And we can go on. He was in the fire with the three son with the three children. Okay? Alright? God made appearance in the Old Testament as a man. Okay? But what was different about this is Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, Son of Man, made of a woman made under the law. Made under the law. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. People, okay? All right? And he was born under the law. In a body of a woman, okay, a body that was made of dirt, a body that could be corruptible, that would break down in time, that would age, okay, all right, let's continue this, let's, let's keep reading, verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And then you go to Romans chapter 8, one of the more hated parts of scripture for these um, Catholic coadjutors who love to worship the flesh. Romans 8 verses 1 and verse 5. There is therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, saved, who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the Lord is that spirit, okay? For the law of the capital S spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. Remember, our flesh is of dirt, okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh born of a woman okay the flesh that God came into was made of dirt okay all right for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh I know you hate that some of you people out there Oh, you hate that. Oh, you hate that. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, capital S, which is the Lord Himself. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the capital S Spirit, the things of the capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Judge not. Well, well, wait a minute. The scripture. Well, what about you? The, the Lord gave me victory over that sin. Man, okay? I, you know, I used to be doing what you're doing. And, well, you don't sin. I, I sin every day. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But see, the Lord within me, he is the judge, right? Right? And we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Okay, you, do you see where we're going with this? You see where we're going? Now see, the flesh that God was manifest in was what? Made of woman. Made of a woman. 
mankind came of dirt. This isn't rocket science. You can figure this out, okay? All right? But what happened? Isaiah 4. Isaiah 4, okay? See, Jesus Christ did what no man can do. What is that? Isaiah 4, verses 18 on to verse 22. Isaiah 4. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> One second. One second. Sorry about that. I forgot to put the two. Isaiah 42. Okay, Isaiah 42. Sorry, you're like, uh, Brad, you go there. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Okay. Isaiah 42, verses 18 on to verse 22. You go to Isaiah 4, right? It's like, uh, Brad. <laughs> Isaiah 42. Verses 18 on verse 22. Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant? Who, who calls us who are saved blind? Us people, the world, Christians. Or deaf as my messenger that I sent. What do you mean? You, what's, you, you don't believe in logic? How man is progressing and getting better? Right? Who is blind but my servant? Or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the Lord's servant? Now obviously that's not for the Lord's servant. But see, the world affixed to those of us who serve the Lord as being such. Verse 20. Seeing many things, thou observest not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Talking about Jesus Christ. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Ah, hold up. Keep reading. But this people, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hidden prison houses. They are for prey, and our adversary, the, lion, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeing whom he may devour. Okay, I just bradized that from 1 Peter chapter 5, okay? And none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Verse 21. Okay, now first of all, okay, this is not a contradiction. Because one might say, oh, it says right here, he will, make the law, he will magnify the law and make it honorable. So what, the law was not honorable? The law is in and of itself absolutely is honorable. But what's the problem there? Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, verses 12 and 13. Romans chapter 7. Why am I having troubles getting to Romans? <laughs> Romans chapter 7, verses 12 and 13. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. What does that mean? Okay? Um, look at verse 7 in Romans 7. Okay? What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said thou shalt not covet. That was the purpose of the law. Okay? And, and, and James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Okay? James chapter 2. James chapter 2. And herein is the problem. James chapter 2, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. See, here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Where it says here, the Lord is well pleased for his sake in Isaiah 42, verse 21, 
The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. It's not that the law was not honorable. It's the fact that no man on earth could keep the law perfectly. Why? Satan was cursed in the Garden of Eden to crawl to, on his belly to eat dust. Flesh is dust. Man is made of dust. Okay, you read about that in Genesis, okay? So, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, born of a woman, made under the law, okay? Why? To redeem those that were under the law. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. How so? See, the flesh that Jesus Christ is come into, the flesh itself was that of a woman. What does that mean? He, he was born. He was born out of the matrix, okay? He, he was born of water, okay? Mary's water broke, okay? The flesh that Jesus is coming was what? It was made of dirt, okay? Corruptible, all right? But see, God manifest in the flesh. Did what? Magnified the law and made it honorable. How so? He never broke the law. He never sinned. He never had a sinful thought. He never needed a, a sacrifice. He got he got baptized for identification purposes only. Okay, no, what those crazy charismatic psychopaths want you to believe. Okay, he got baptized for identification. Okay, that was it. He never sinned once. But that flesh was sinful. See, a lot of you can't stand that. Okay? Why? Because you think this flesh is God. No. No. And see, he magnified the law and made it honorable. Hence, because he never sinned once, that blood that he shed on the cross was precious because it was blood that was never tainted with sin, even though the flesh itself was sinful. He never sinned once. Okay? And see, all of mankind are born sinners. Right? Right? We're all born sinners, right? So, then, to say that Joseph was the father of Jesus? You see how that works? You see how that works? Okay? All right? The Holy Ghost overshadowed uh, whatever it was, overshadowed Mary, and she was with child of the Holy Ghost. Okay, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay, there is, there is no perverse whatever like the Mormons want you to believe. There's none of that there, okay? All right? Behold, a woman shall conceive, being a virgin. Okay? All right? All right? But st still, all right? Made of a, a born of a woman, made under the law. Okay, that is why Jesus Christ, God the Father, can understand perfectly what you and I go through because all the temptations of the flesh were in the flesh. But see, God Himself cannot be tempted with evil, right? Right. But the flesh that God was in could. That's how you reconcile that. Because, you know, in the temptation in, in the wilderness, and you say, well, God can't be tempted with evil, and then the atheists will say, well, look, well, well, Jesus was tempted. Okay, the, the flesh was tempted. God can't be tempted to do evil. This is what was tempted. You see how that works? Okay, you see how that works? That's uh, uh, 59 minutes in. Okay? Jesus never sinned. Not at all. Never once. Not a thought, not a glance, nothing. Okay? Hence, because he never sinned, and because, okay, because God manifests in the flesh, a man was not father of Jesus. You see how that works? So, he was not born a sinner, even though the flesh 
that he was born into is flesh that came from dirt. Do you do you understand how that works? Do you understand? I, I hope you do. Okay? I hope you do. Okay? So now, okay, now let's go back to John chapter 5. Let's continue. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, picking up at verse 28. But let's read verse 27 again. And he hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. At judgment, man is going to be looking at you. It's going to be Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. What does that mean? What does that mean? As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. I bear witness of myself. My witness is not true. Verse 30 there. Okay, go to John chapter 6. Verses 61 on to 64. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. So when you look in John chapter 5 when he says, I can of my own self do nothing. What does that mean? The flesh profiteth nothing. Okay? Alright, remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? But this of itself is what? It is the flesh that quickeneth. I mean, it is, excuse me, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. See, the judgment that came of God through our Lord Jesus Christ was nothing that was based upon things of flesh, but of spirit. God is a spirit. You see how that works? And see, the lie in the Garden of Eden, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, and the curse, from dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. Hence, man's judgment is flawed, unless you have God within you. You see how that works? You see how that works? Okay? Let's continue here. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. Well, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, which one? You believe in, the one, in one of three gods and demote Jesus and say, He is not the Father. Wow. Wow, you're crazy. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And of course with that, um, you know, the Lord knoweth them who are his. The Lord knoweth those who are his. And of course, Matthew chapter 26, just, just one verse. Matthew chapter 26, one verse. Verse 41. Our Lord himself says, okay. 41. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay? And John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verses 16 on to verse 18. John chapter 7. Verses 16 on to verse 18. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. What does that mean of what we've been looking at? Okay? It isn't a doctrine that was of the flesh. Okay? It was a doctrine of God. Okay? 
because Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? All right? That separation between that which is flesh and that which is God. Okay? Which a lot which these devils who say don't judge me can't do because that circumcision made without hands, the Lord himself within them isn't there. Do you get it? Do you get it? Jesus Christ, he is that circumcision made without hands. Okay? You got lost people saying, don't judge me. Well, I can't judge you. Because the Lord is within me. He saved me. He sealed me until the day of redemption. I have a perfect standard on which to judge first myself and then others according to the scriptures. Okay? All right? All right? <clears throat> Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. How do we judge righteous judgment? By feelings? No. No. God forbid. No. But how do you judge righteous judgment? It's right here. It's right here. Okay? And, and Paul, Paul in Galatians, Paul in Galatians chapter 1, says in uh, Paul in Galatians chapter 1 verses 10 on to verse 12 you know you'll know of the doctrine whether it is of God or of flesh okay for do I not persuade men or God or do I seek to please men for if I yet pleased men I should not be the servant of Christ but I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, not after flesh. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Judge not. Right? Okay? Judge not. Judge not that ye be not judged. Hmm. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 5. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God because God dwells within us. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Verse 3. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not myself. Hmm. John 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, capital C, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you, because he is the Father. Okay? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. And you would not know sin unless it was by the law, right? Right? And the one who wrote the law, our Father, Jesus Christ, dwells within you. And he knows what is perfect, righteous judgment. See, today, evil is good and good is evil. Okay? Ah, we're not judging. You shouldn't do that. But hey, whatever. You just believe, right? Okay? Let's keep reading here. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment, 
because the prince of this world is judged. Mm -hmm. Who is the prince of this world? Oh, that'd be Satan. Okay. I have many. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of Truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. And he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Ah, okay, okay. And John chapter three, verses seven on to verse nine. John chapter three, verses seven on to verse. Nine. Uh, excuse me. It was. Um, uh, uh, one, one second. One second. <laughs> First John. <laughs> Sorry, brethren. First John, chapter three. First John, chapter three. Okay. Verses seven on to verse nine. First John, chapter three, verses seven on to verse nine. Little children. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Okay? Now you got to remember, some of these lost devils can make appropriate right judgments. But ultimately, ultimately... They cannot judge what is truly good and truly evil because the Lord is not in them. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifest, God manifest in the flesh, okay? That he might destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil. Oh, from the Garden of Eden. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High, that you can judge righteously, perfectly, as God can, and we cannot. Okay? Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God what does this mean being born again the seed that is within the saint of the church of the living God is the Lord himself the Holy Ghost the Lord is that spirit Ephesians Chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, okay, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 14, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom, after, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, <laughs> whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. And 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, just one verse. Verse 17. Now, the Lord is that capital S Spirit. And where the capital S Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Okay? So, verse 9 in 1 John chapter 3 is talking about whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. God within the saint does not commit sin. We commit sin, okay? Because our spirit and our soul are, are still in this, okay? Hence the battle of the, the spirit and the flesh on a daily thing. 
But see, God within us, who has sealed us, He will not sin. He will not guide you on to sin. He will not lead you on to sin. He will not teach you in anything that is sin. Because why? God can't sin. Okay? Okay? You, you people, you got to understand the separation between the flesh and the spirit. That circumcision made without hands. Okay? Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. If you're not born again, you're not saved. If you're not born again, the Lord does not dwell within you. If you're not born again, you're not sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? For his seed remaineth in him. The Lord, the Holy Ghost, that seal until the day of redemption, the Father. Okay? That's what that's talking about. And he cannot sin. God cannot sin. Because he is born of God. Born again. Okay? You and I, saints, we sin every day. But God within us, okay? God within us cannot, will not lead us or guide us on to sin. Now, we can make stupid decisions and choose to ignore, to quench, quench the spirit. Okay? We can almost sear our consciences, right? But see, God, who dwells within the saint, is not going to lead him, guide him onto sin. It's not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen. All right? This will guide you onto God knows what. God within you. He won't guide you onto sin. You understand? Do you? Do, please tell me you understand. Please. Okay? Now, and now, when you go back to um, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 again, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment, fleshly judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Okay? Now, Paul obviously was saved, sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord was within him, right? So, he judged not, he doesn't judge himself. And in John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. How did Paul judge? How did Paul say, like, I judge not mine own self? Look at verse 4. For I know nothing by myself, fleshly. Okay? Yet am I not hereby justified. How was Paul justified? In that he was saved. Sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. So, okay. He doesn't judge his own self, but the Lord judges him. Okay? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, we read what? 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 5 on verse 8. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? If Jesus is not in you, you're reprobate. Okay? But I trust that ye shall know that we are not repro reprobates, meaning you know that we're saved. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Paul believed in no sin. But Romans chapter 7. He knew he was going to regardless. Okay? Not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Reprobates unto who? The world. Don't judge me. Who are you to judge? I'm dirt. But see, I'm saved. And the Lord that is in me will lead me and guide me into all truth. And I examine myself daily in the scriptures. But see... I am able to judge you because, number one, the Lord is within me and I have a perfect standard on where I judge myself and others. You see how that works? Why do you think Satan has gone to great lengths to give you Bibles o o over the Scriptures? Hmm? You can find anything that suits you, right? And you can get away with any devilment with any of these translations of the Scriptures, which are up to, what, 900 of them or something like that? Uh, uh, Brother Alexander did a video about that where he talked about that, if I can remember. Um, uh, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the description box 
or, or if Brother Alexander will, he'll put it in there eventually himself. But, okay, we have a perfect standard, the authorized version. God who is perfect, who will not, who cannot sin, will not guide you into sin, okay? We judge ourselves daily, but hence, because the Lord is in us, we judge righteous judgment. See? Okay? All right? This is not that difficult to get, okay? This, this really isn't, okay? This, this really isn't. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself. Okay? Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. The Lord judges us through the scripture. But see, look in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? Yes. But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from amongst yourselves that wicked person. So one of these devils will be like, Well, see, then those who are without, don't judge them. Uh, no. No, 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 no. No, what is this talking about? Those who are without God judgeth. Okay? But he that judgeth me is the Lord. What, what is this talking about? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Okay? See, when the Lord saves you, you are not under the law. Okay? You're not under the law. What does that mean? 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 8 on to verse 11. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. See, those of you lost people, you know the Ten Commandments? Have you ever lied? Have you ever coveted? Have you ever stolen? Hmm? Well, I've never stolen, but you have lied before. Might not have lied. Yeah, right. But you have coveted before. Huh? Huh? Our Lord says, you know, if you look upon a maid and lust after her in your heart, you have committed adultery with her in your heart already. Okay? Some of you have not committed physical adultery. But you've looked at, uh, you men, you've oogled at a woman before, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And see, here's the thing. The law is the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Man cannot keep the law perfectly. We've already established that. If you break one point of the law, you've done messed it all up. Man cannot keep the law perfectly. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. He could. He did. He magnified the law and made it honorable because he never sinned. Okay? Even though that flesh was capable of sin, he never sinned. See how that works? You see how that works? You see? You see? Okay? Okay? So, you lost people. It's so like, well, yeah, I, I have lied. I have done that. You're guilty before God. You're guilty before God. Okay? So, and then what happens? It's like, well, then i got to keep the law to be saved. No. There, is ha there just happens to be this death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross. Okay? The dispensation changed with the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? It is finished. By grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Okay? And they're in the problem. It's like, okay, well, I'll try to keep the law to be right with God. You can't keep the law perfectly. You can't. And if for, you're trying to keep the law, how come you're not making animal sacrifices? Okay? All right? It is finished. Jesus Christ did what no man could do, keep the law perfectly. He shed his precious, perfect blood on the cross because he never sinned, 
Okay? Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified in the fact that he never sinned. Hence, the blood was perfect. Okay? Hence, he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture, shed his blood on the cross. Okay? God shall offer himself, God shall uh, provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. Okay? You go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Lamb without blemish, without spot. Okay? All right? So see, you lost people. It's interesting because you're going to be judged by Scripture regardless. We at the judgment seat of Christ, our works for rewards are going to be judged. Okay? We're once saved, always saved. At the judgment seat of Christ, our saved people, our works are going to be judged for our rewards. You who do not go up at the redemption of the purchased possession, you're going to go to the great white throne, okay, where it's going to be works salvation judged, okay? <laughs> all right? That's what the great white throne of judgment is, all right? You don't want to go there because a lot of you aren't going to make it, okay? Do you understand? And see, that's the whole thing. You come to the Lord who fulfilled the law in doing the ultimate sacrifice of himself, and so you don't have to keep the law today. Okay? Those that are without, God judges. Yes. That does not mean that we do not judge them according to the scripture. It's our duty to inform the lost. It's like, hey, unless the Lord save you, you're going to go to hell and burn. Okay? That doesn't mean that we don't judge lost people. God forbid. No. No. Okay? Let's continue. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? Verse 5. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. So see, you're not supposed to judge at all. You're not supposed to judge lost people. No. no, 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 no. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Who will bring, who will both, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. See, man without the Lord is incapable of perfect righteous judgment. Okay? God is the only one who is capable of perfect righteous judgment. Okay? And when God lives within the saved believer, God is the one that is perfect, uh, uh, perfect without sin and can judge righteously. And he will guide us into all truth that we may judge according to the scriptures. Of course, we let flesh get in the way and we make horrible, horrendous mistakes and judge poorly. Okay? Because remember, it's not at force. But God is within us and we have a perfect standard. Hence, we are able now with the Lord within us to know perfect judgment. Okay? All right. Verse 5. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verses 20 on to verse 21. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be approved. He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. John 15, verses 21 on to verse 27. John 15, verses 21 on to verse 27. But all these things shall they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. Jesus is the father, okay? But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. 
and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Mm. Okay. Second Peter chapter. Second uh, Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Verses nineteen on to verse twenty-one. And here, and here, this should click for you. Here, this should click for you. Verse five in First Corinthians chapter four. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. See, you're lost. Okay, and we're going to look at this uh, in Romans chapter 2. You're lost, judging other lost people. It's the pot calling the kettle black. You can't judge righteously. You don't have the Lord within you. You have no idea what true, perfect, righteous judgment is because the Lord is not in you and you, are not, you do not have a perfect standard on which to judge by. Your judgment proceedeth from flesh, yourself, which is flawed, of the earth. Okay? You get it? Okay? So, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Some would like to say, well, this is talking about his second coming or the redemption of the purchased possession. So what? We're not supposed to judge at all until that happens? A lot of these Christians will have you believe that because they don't want uh, their sins to be revealed, right? They hate the light. And when one of us uh, saints of the church of the living God who has the Lord within us goes into, uh, hey, hey, dude, you know, that's a, don't judge me. You see how this works? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will both, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. We, we read that in John, okay? All right? And will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 21. Okay? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. I will be in them, and I will dwell in them. Okay? Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now the Bible's messed us all up, okay, because it'll link it back to Isaiah chapter 14, which is O Lucifer, son of the morning. Some of the Bibles will put day star. No, Lucifer, son of the morning. Jesus Christ, the morning star. Jesus Christ, the day star. Okay? Okay, the Spirit of God. Okay? Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now notice that it's not capitalized. Well, what is that referring to? The Lord in you. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Verse 21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, and the day star arise in your hearts. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 21. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Yeah, you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. Okay? Okay, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And if you trust in your own heart, you are a fool. We've talked about that at length. Okay? God is greater than our hearts. Okay? For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Alright? We love it. If our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Well, my heart co doesn't condemn me. Okay? But then you're living as a devil, living contrary to the scripture. Are you even saved? Is the reason why your heart is not being condemned is because you're not saved? I wonder. 
But see, when we know that we are doing right according to the perfect standard of Scripture, see how that works? Do you see how that works? Okay? And Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, verses 3 and 5, on verse 5. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, self-examination, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. What does that mean? We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. Okay? It's not that we are saving ourselves or anything like that. No. We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. So when Paul talks about Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, until you are saved. You are until you are saved, you cannot you cannot know what is perfect righteous judgment. You can't. Okay? Why? Because the Lord will lead you and guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? Alright? We judge ourselves and others. Why? Because we have, number one, the Lord within us, and we have a perfect standard on which we judge. Okay? All right? Now, now, go to back to Matthew chapter 7. And people will bring up like uh, Romans chapter 14, right? Romans chapter 14. Have you ever read what Romans chapter 14 is? Okay, let's go there. Uh, Romans chapter 14. Okay, I, I can just hear you now. You're, you're quoting Romans chapter 14. Okay, Romans chapter 14, verses 3 and 4. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or fall. Follow, yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. That's talking about judging people in their diet. Okay? We can eat pork today. The dietary restrictions that were under the law are not there because of the circumcision made without hands, and it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. You read about that in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 100, verse 5. We can eat pork today. If you don't want to, hey! Knock yourself out. You want to remain kosher? Knock yourself out, man. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Don't say that it's salvific in or you, that in order to be saved, you can't eat pork. Okay? I don't judge you. If you're a vegan and you're a saint, I used to be a vegan for a while myself. But if you're a vegan and you're a saint, uh, I'll look at you a little funny, but I'm not going to judge you by what you're eating. That's what that's specifically talking about. Okay? Dietary. Judging on diet. And then the other one, uh, verses 10 and 13, you know, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set up not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? And verse 13, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. What's the context of that? Okay? God, God, we are to at least give one day out of the seven unto God. Okay? Alright? At least one day. If you want to do that on a Wednesday, go ahead. You want to do that on Sunday, go ahead. You want to do that on the scriptural Sabbath, Saturday, go ahead. Okay? But, and the holy days, okay, that are talked about in Scripture, are the ones, are the ones that are talked about in Scripture, okay? We are not to judge one another. If you want to, like, like, for example, uh, Thursday, that's the day when me and my wife, or I myself, just stay at home and worship the Lord all day. Just, I mean, we do that every day, but have one day set apart out of your week to give on to the Lord exclusively. Okay? Absolutely. Okay? And we are not to judge. It's like, hey, I, I, my day with the Lord specifically is Wednesday. Well, it's supposed to be on the Sabbath. Uh, that's not um, binding doctrinally for us today for salvation. Okay? 
You want to worship God on the Sabbath? Go ahead. You want to do it on Sunday? Go ahead. All right? We're not to judge each other on those uh, premises, okay? Trying to use this to justify paganism and the worship of that man of sin, the son of perdition, Antichrist, to use this to justify yourself yoking yourself up with Rome? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Leave that alone, brethren. Okay? But see, that's what Romans 14 is about. Dietary and when someone wants to worship the Lord. Okay? All right? And leave the one about the Roman Catholic Holy Day. <laughs> uh, uh, holiday, excuse me. Okay, the, the birth of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, leave that alone. Okay? All right? But that's what Romans 14 is talking about. Diet and day of worship. Okay? We're not supposed to judge people in those things. Okay? Hey, you want to keep the Sabbath? Knock yourself out. If you want to do it on Sunday, knock yourself out. You want to do it Tuesday? Knock yourself out, man. I'm not going to judge you for what day you worship the Lord. I do it on the 25th of December. So you're yoking yourself up with the Vatican in the premise of worshiping Satan and trying to take that which is pagan and make it viable under the church of the living God. You go away. Okay? You go away. I'm not going to get started on that. That, that just chafes my buttocks. Okay? Now, go back to Matthew chapter 7. So judge not. Verse 1. That ye be not judged. Okay? Man in and of himself cannot judge perfect righteous judgment. In order to truly know what is perfect righteous judgment, we need the Lord and we need the perfect standard. Okay? For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 24. Romans chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 24. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Okay? If I, were, if I were getting drunk all the time, i go up to you, hey, you just you shouldn't drink, man. That stuff will kill you. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. You get it? Okay. Well, we're all sinners. Okay, right? So because you, you said yourself, you sin yourself, Brad, then you can't judge me. I, the Lord within me, I judge not my own self. The Lord judges me through the scriptures because I read, I search the scriptures daily. I read this word daily. He judges me through the scriptures. Okay? He's within me. He judges me by his perfect standard. You see how that works? And because he judges me and I judge myself through the word, hence... I am able because God is in me and I have a perfect standard in which I judge myself first. Yes. If judgment first begins at the house of God, yes, we judge ourselves first. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we judge others because God who is perfect lives within us and we have a perfect standard. Okay? Verse 22. The Bible says the man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. So, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, um, if you're a drunkard going to drunkards, telling drunkards not to drink and get drunk while well, you're a drunkard, eh, eh, good, 
Not good. That's what that's talking about. Verse 3. Okay? Verse 3 in Matthew 7. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? And see, these people, these Christians who want to, you know, don't judge me, defend themselves, it's like, well, you never get the beam out of your eye. Hence, then you are never able to truly judge me. Hmm. Really? Romans, and see, Romans chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. Now, us saints of the church of the living God, yes, we can do the same things that lost people can do. What's the difference? We have the Lord within us, who leads us and guides us into all truth the truth of his perfect standard, the authorized version, the King James Version. Okay? We have he who is perfect that dwells within us, who will lead us and guide us into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? So, Romans 1, Romans 2, and Romans 3 is there is God pleading with you, showing your indictment of how inept you are of judging righteously in the first place and that you need a Savior. So when people who are not saved, who does, do not have God within them, okay, judging other people, what is their foundation of their judgment? Themselves. Flesh. They are of their father the devil. Do you see how that works? Okay? But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to what? To repentance. To repentance. See, Romans chapter 2, 1, 2, and Romans chapter 3 are specifically there to indict the lost sinner. You know, that's why we take people down the Romans road, okay? Because it's about you, the lost sinner, okay? So see, Romans 2, verses 1 on to verse 4, specifically, verse 4 ties it up, okay? Saved people have the Lord within them. Okay, and he will guide you into all truth. He will not guide you into sin. Okay, and he will guide you into all truth, the perfect standard of the authorized version. This is where we judge. We judge ourselves first, but yet we judge others because we have a perfect standard, and the Lord will lead us and guide us into all truth. Okay, you see how this works. So Romans 2, verses 1 under verse 4, is describing someone who does not uh, have... A, right there, verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. This is talking about someone who is not saved, judging other people by the standard of their own self being dirt. Not having the Lord within them, or going off of the perfect standard. Do you understand? Okay? All right? So, when you go back to Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Okay? You're lost trying to judge righteously, right? Well, you can get it right sometimes, but ultimately, you don't know what is right, perfect judgment, because you do not have the Lord within you, and you do not have a perfect standard on which you judge. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Right? Right? I will be like the Most High. Your judgment proceeds of yourself, not of the truth in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth. Delight. He is the Father's. Okay? 
Okay? That's what that's talking about. Verse 4. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. And this, as we are going, ought to be uh, quite readily available or you know be able to get but Romans chapter 1 verses 28 down to verse 32 okay professing themselves to be wise they became fools these atheists these Muslims and these uh, Christians who are not saved they don't have the Lord within them who is the way the truth and the life okay who will guide you into all truth who will never guide you on to sin okay he will guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The perfect and errant. Given by inspiration word of God. Okay? Okay? Alright? See, there are incidences, there are times when, yes, a lost man can judge rightly. Yes! But see, ultimately, if you're not saved, that which is perfect, that which is true, is not in you. Okay? God is not in you. Hence, God is the only one who truly, perfectly knows what is good and what is evil. And he shows you in the scriptures. See, we who are of the church of the living God, saints, we are required to judge. But how? through the scriptures. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verses 28 on to verse 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, you're just a sinner just like me. I am. Who are you to judge? Nobody, I'm dirt. But see, the Lord within me, who judges me daily in the scriptures, he will lead me and guide me into all truth. The Lord in me, okay, sealed into the day of redemption, okay, I belong unto the Lord. Hence, I am of the body of Christ, the church of the living God, an ambassador of Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Hence, I am required to judge. You get it? And someone who is not saved doesn't want to hear it. Don't judge me. Okay? Alright? Now, verse 5, verse 5 in Matthew chapter 7. Now, hypocrite. A hypocrite is someone trying to be something that they are not. Okay? And see, when you are saved, okay, you're going to be with the Lord. You're a saint. You still sin every day. Yes, you do. Okay? Sinless perfection in this life is impossible. You want to be sinless, you got to be dead. Okay? And be given your new body. Okay, then we won't sin. Okay? But, alright, a hypocrite is someone being something they are not. Okay? You and I, saints, we sin, we are being something that we are not. Okay? Alright? But yet we sin every day. Okay? We are saints who sin. Alright? Paul talks about that in Romans 7. Romans 7 uh, expository video will be for you in the description box. Okay? But, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. And these 
people uh, don't judge me. They come to this. It's like, well, you'll never be. Uh, that we're, you're all, that's why they're. That's over there. That's why their main thing is hypocrite, 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 pointing the finger at everybody. Because they, their judgment proceeds of themselves, of the flesh. You see. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Romans chapter 3. We're almost done. This is actually going a lot quicker than I had anticipated. Romans chapter 3. Verses 1, verse 18. <gasps> what advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God with God without effect? God forbid. Yea. Let God be true. Every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and might over mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? What shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? How is God, God going to judge the world? Right here. Okay? <clears throat> For if the truth of God hath more bounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather... As we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just? What then? Are we better than they? No. In the wise. For we have before proved both Jews, the Hebraic people, and Gentiles, non-Hebrew people, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Hmm. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. Hmm. Verse 13. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. In Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, verses 17 on verse 21. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. What does that mean? Adam. Because of the transgression of Adam and Eve, all of mankind are born sinners. Okay? That's what that means. Alright? For if by one man's offense death reigned by one. Okay? Man was originally created to be immortal, but after the fall, okay, man dies, okay? And especially after what? Genesis, uh, after the flood, uh, uh, you know, God put the, the time limit, uh, the extent that man's life will attain to 120 years, and that happened gradually, okay? But, all right. For if by one man's uh, offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, every everyone is born sinners. Okay? Alright? Even so, by the righteousness of one, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. The death, burial, and resurrection. 
God shall God will provide Himself a lamb for burnt offering. Himself. Okay? For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous, the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? What are we reading to here? Uh, to the close of the chapter. Moreover, the law entered, that the offense might abound. Yes, by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay? But when sin abounded, grace did much more abound. When the law, how is there grace under the law? The animal sacrifices. To cover, not wash away. Because they had to continually do them. Right? The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross, it's finished, Jack. Okay? Verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so, my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10. Romans 10, verses 4 on to verse 13. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. And you cannot keep the law perfectly. Only Christ did. Only Christ can. Okay? But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Like the Jesuit priest does with his woody woody abracadabra hocus pocus when they raise the sun shaped cookie, the bale cookie, okay? Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now the law of God is written in man's hearts because even some of these worst evil men realize that there are certain things that they do that just instinctively it's like, that's not good. That's not good. But see, they not being saved themselves that spirit of truth who is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will not lead them into all truth because he's not within them. See? See how that works? Okay? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And of course, devils, it's like, just believe. Uh, that's a work. Oh, that's for the, uh, the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't believe that nonsense. That's a lie. Okay? This is doctrine for us today. All right? For the scripture saith, Whoso believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But see, broken of your self-righteousness, okay? Having godly sorrow, it's your fault that he went to the cross and the fear of the Lord, because if he doesn't save you, you're going to hell. And you call upon, your, uh, upon his name. And see, these devils want to skip over broken repentance, uh, brokenness, uh, repentance, okay, turning from your self-righteousness onto the Lord, okay? Contrition, godly sorrow, it's your fault. You can't blame other people. And the fear of the Lord. They want to skip over that and go right to believe or just say these things and you'll be saved. So when it comes to this judge not, okay, when our Lord is saying that, 
He's talking about hypocritical judgment, number one. And you've also got to remember, number two, this is the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is all works. No faith is involved because you're going to be able to see the Lord on the throne. Okay? So, these people are going to have to stand before the judge, the Lord Jesus. They're going to have bigger fish to fry. Okay? You know what I'm saying? But, when someone will, don't judge me. Why? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? We are required to judge. And see, true judgment comes from the Lord. And we who are our saints of the church of the living God, see, we can judge. We are supposed to judge. Why? Because the Lord is within us. And he leads us and guides us into all truth. And we judge according to what? The perfect standard, KJV. We are required to judge, dear friends. And when people say, "Don't judge me," what is that? Don't tell me about your. Don't tell me about uh, your Jesus. Don't judge me. You look at you. I'm saved. The Lord's within me, and I have a perfect standard. Yeah, I judge myself, but you know what? The Lord is within me. Hence, He has given me. His word, the authorized version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Uh, guess what? Yeah, judgment begins at the house of God. Those who are saved, absolutely, you're right. But you know what? He has saved me. I'm once saved, always saved, sealed until the day of redemption. I judge myself. But you know what? I'm going to judge you according to the scripture. That's all I've got to say about that. So, that's going to be it for this video. This was a lot shorter than I had anticipated. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I thought I, you know, it's like, oh, it's going to be a two-parter. But um, there will be many links in the description box uh, for you to consider about all of this. Um, watch out for these people. Like, don't judge me. Watch out for these people. Because, you know what? Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Okay? I have brethren who judge me according to Scripture. Okay? I judge myself according to Scripture. The Lord leads me and guides me into all truth. Now, there are times when I am a, a, an idiot and want to go on my own merry way as all as do we all we make horrible decisions again romans chapter 7 will be for you in the description box okay the lord is the source of all judgment and we who are saved have the lord within us permanently until the day of uh, redemption the purchase possession okay and he has given us the perfect and errant word of God. Hence, we are required to judge. So when, when someone comes to you and it's like, well, hey, don't judge me. Who are you? You sin too. Hey, the Lord saved me. And he has given me his perfect standard, his word. I'm judging you according to God's standard, not mine. You don't live up to it. You're right, I don't. But see, the Lord is within me. Okay? My grace is sufficient for thee. Okay? So, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully this has been, I helped you. Um, gone through some of this stuff with you. Uh, hopefully... You know, hopefully the Lord um, will be pleased with this and let this be uploaded. And um, thank you, brethren. And um, thank you. Please keep us in your prayers. Oh, we need all the prayers we can get. <laughs> Rough month here. Got a lot of stuff going on this month.
So, pray for one another. Thank you, brethren. Love you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.